News 3 WSIL. Here's what's happening right now. Good Thursday morning, a rain-free start, but tracking some pretty cold weather for April. Heading our way, I'll have the latest coming up. First time in 25 years, our state is actually having a surplus. We've paid our bills and we're having a surplus. Illinois House Democrats released their budget proposal. It's not a partisan issue. This is a public safety issue. Illinois lawmakers discuss public safety and law enforcement support bills as the spring legislative session is near a close. We couldn't cut enough staff. We couldn't cut enough programs and still operate. And a local superintendent is once again pushing lawmakers to help save her school district. News 3 this morning starts right now. We've got you covered from WSIL News 3 this morning. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, April 7th. I'm Dave Davis. And I'm Evie Allen. We're so happy you decided to be with us today. Storm Track 3 Chief Meteorologist Nick Housen is here with a look at our forecast. A little cooler today, but... No rain. No rain. That's uh, some good news, of course. But yes, it is pretty cold outside. Uh, temperatures back into the low 40s. Then you factor in the wind and even feels colder. But uh, yes, very happy to report a rain free morning across the region. In fact, uh, here after sunrise, we are going to see quite a bit of sunshine to start the day. We're not completely out of the woods as far as the rain goes, yo, uh, though, quite yet. Live view from Mount Vernon looking back towards the south over the interstate, uh, continuing to fall back into the lower 40s. This is about where uh, many of us will bottom out for the morning. 43 currently in Marion. We've got 42 in Carbondale, 41 into Mount Vernon. Harrisburg, you're at 42 as well. 46 at this hour in Paducah, factor in the breeze. And uh, some of us are dealing with wind chills back into the upper 30s. So uh, bundle up. A lot of sunshine to start uh, this afternoon. Clouds begin to return. Winds are out of the west and northwest. A pretty windy afternoon and high temperatures are running about 10 degrees below average for this time of year. We'll only be back in the mid 50s and tracking a chance for a few hit and miss showers towards the later part of the day and into the evening hours. And some of that rain could brief even change over to snow by this time tomorrow morning. We'll have the latest on that coming up. We're going to be ending FY22 for, with a surplus for the first time in a quarter century of Illinois history. Well, Illinois House Democrats have presented their state budget proposal and relief plan. Now they say their $45.6 million budget proposal reflects an improving economy in the state. Yeah, the proposal supports family, schools, law enforcement, and vital programs. There's also property tax rebates that are similar to what Governor J.B. Pritzker had introduced, but they would only be for homeowners that need the relief. The proposal would also suspend the grocery tax for a year, and it would give one-time payments to those eligible for the earned income tax credit. Michael Zaleski, chair of the House Revenue Committee, says their proposal would help the people of Illinois. Our House Democratic plan, we believe, is um, targeted to the families who need it and responsible. It consists of a number of the things the governor has asked for. It consists of a number of the things the Senate Democrats have asked for. Um, but it does so in a responsible way that makes sure we'll still be able to fund a lot of the core priorities Democrats um, want to fund in, in this budget. Now here's a little breakdown on that. House Democrats say the tax rebate would be $100 for single filers and $200 for joint filers. They also propose to double the tax credit for teachers who buy their own classroom supplies. Now a vote on the House floor was expected late last night, but that had been pushed until 10 this morning. People talk about consolidated. We are consolidated. You know, the communities have been fiscally responsible. There is not another efficient way for us to operate the Shawnee School District needs emergency funding to pass in the House budget by tomorrow or consolidation could be a possibility. Well, staff and teachers remain hopeful this morning, but job loss and students moving schools could be in the near future. Yeah, and in these final hours, the superintendent wants those impacted to reach out to their local lawmakers and ask them to vote for budget solutions. News 3's Brooke Slyer joins us in studio with more. Brooke. Well, Evie and Dave, the school district is looking for emergency funding as a short-term short -term solution. They're also looking for an amendment to the evidence-based funding formula as a long-term solution. But time, as you noticed, is ticking. And this is all over the Grand Tower Energy Center neglecting to pay their property taxes. The plant supplies $1.3 million of the district's $4 million budget. Right now, the district is running off of its savings and need law it needs lawmakers to pass the budget solutions by tomorrow. Superintendent Shelley Clover Hill says if it doesn't, 
they have another avenue before possible consolidation. And so we are very hopeful that that will happen. Um, if it doesn't happen, what we think next steps would be is to ask again in the next session, which would be the veto session. In these final hours, she's urging those in her school district to reach out to Representative Paul Jacobs. That way, he'll be more inclined to vote in favor of these budget solutions. This would also help the Glacia School District, which is going through a similar situation with a coal mine. Those parents can reach out to Pat Representative Patrick Windhorse. Reporting in studio, Brooke Slyer, News 3. While many of these proposals are good,